Hey folks, so this is something a little bit different for tonight. Nothing to do with music. It's just everything to do with this wonderful microphone that has come into my life since mm, maybe June of this year. So I've had it a few months, but I've not really done much with it yet. Uh, it's an Shure SM7B, which is one of those holy grail microphones for professional studios uh, home studio guys, especially, um, and it's it's typically really out of most home studio guys' budget. Uh, but I managed to find an incredible deal on this thing earlier in the year, and uh, worked out a bit of a gear swap with somebody for it as well uh, as considerations, and. Voila, is the Shure SM7B. It was brand new in package, delivered to my house. Now, uh, before we start, I'm just going to show you the back of the microphone so that you can see the settings that are on there. There are two possible filters on there. I'm not going to go into those now because there are 8 million YouTube videos on that already. What I'm going to do is show you my results with the SM7B on incredibly budget equipment. Now, the SM7B has a very low output, which means um, it needs a lot of gain or volume boost, if you put it that way, between the microphone and whatever you're going to use it for, whether it's a mixer or an audio interface. Um, some people call it gain hungry. And as a result of such dynamic microphones, even ribbon microphones like that, because they need a lot of boost uh, to get the signal up, um, there's a number of devices out there that you can buy that are really quite pricey um, to get your volume boosted. Now, what I'm using is, um, I will turn it towards the camera here, and... If you are new to home recording or not new to home recording, you'll understand what this little baby is. That is an ART Tube MP Studio or MPST as they will call it online. And what it is, is it's a one channel tube preamplifier. Now that little device there works phenomenal on bass. Um, bass is kind of one of my big things and all of my bass tracks have been recorded through there it sounds phenomenal in live situations going into a preamp or i've even used it um straight into a snake straight into a di uh with really great results uh, i've recorded vocals through it through um dynamic and condenser microphones with great results but today we're going to run the sm7b through it in a few different um variations now the if you have looked into the this microphone the sm7b you'll see that folks like madonna and michael jackson and all kinds of really heavy hitters have have tracked their vocals using this this uh, microphone not this very one but this is a this is the version of the microphone. And, um, you know, they're often heralded as being like the best. You know, Michael Jackson's Thriller album apparently was recorded through one of these. And some people will say, no, it was an SM57. And no, I heard it was an SM58 with this mod done to it. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I just knew what I heard from online tests and I knew I wanted one and I found one. So, um, there's two common ways to get the gain boosted from this microphone. Um, or I should say two common devices. One is called a cloud lifter and one is called a fat head. Um, and basically what they are is they are passive. In other words, not powered um, transformer based preamps that take the signal from the microphone and magically make it louder for your um mixer or your audio interface to understand to make sense of for your recording software or broadcast software whether you're using it for recording or podcasting or live sound um, 
but the device that I'm using here, this this ART tube MPST, cost me I think it was hundred and nineteen dollars in two thousand and five. And from what I've seen lately online, you could probably score one for under easily under a hundred bucks Canadian. That's where I am is in Canada. Um, wherever you are, um, if you can grab one of these devices, it's great. So I'm going to run you through a few options on how I have this set up to achieve what I feel is my sweet spot sound where I am right now with this microphone. So on the tube MPST, I have my input right now. Um, I go full and then I dial it back around a quarter of an inch. I don't look, I listen for the sound. Um, again, speaking of looking and listening, the output of the tube MPST is set at 12 o'clock and on my Steinberg UR44 interface, the input on channel one that I have set here is at 11 o'clock. So I'll move further away from the microphone and I'll move closer to the microphone, which is exactly what this microphone is intended to do is allow you to have a very intimate conversation with your listener without having to crank the gain. I love the sound of this microphone. Honestly, it's beautiful. So gain staging is always a huge deal with any kind of gear, whether you're in studio or live. So what I'm going to do is run you through a few options right now. So as I said before, the input is on the preamp is just a hair under full. The output is at 12 o'clock. The input on my UR44 interface is at 11 o'clock. Now what I'm going to do is I'm only going to change the input back to 12 o'clock so it's fairly even. So you'll probably hear that everything is quite a bit quieter now. And if I were to turn up the gain, I'm turning up the gain on the interface and you're going to hear the noise floor goes way up. Now, in my headphones, that's just dreadful. But the detail of the microphone is incredible. It's like, oh my gosh, I love it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial the input down. So when I go back to these default settings for, you know, talking about this, I'm going to go back to my sweet spot. So on the uh, MPST preamp, there is also a plus 20 dB button that you can push down and magically gain 20 dB of gain on your input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial the input back to 12 o'clock. I'm going to dial the input back to 12 o'clock, leave everything else as it was, and then press the 20 dB button, and you're going to hear it. Suddenly the noise floor. But again, the detail of the microphone is spectacular. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing that a lot of effort with a noise gate couldn't fix, but you don't really want to have to deal with that. Now, not having played with a cloud lifter or a fat head I don't know what they sound like I just know with the gear that I have what I can get out of this microphone so I'm going to try turning down the input on the preamp noise goes away a little bit I'll turn up the input on the preamp it didn't gain terribly So now I have the input and the output of the tube MPST at 3 o'clock. The 20 dB pad, or not pad, um, gain engaged. My input on the UR44 is at 9 o'clock, and I'm going to dial it back to, this is the absolute minimum. This is the lowest I can turn the volume down on the interface. In my headphones, it still sounds pretty good. So going back to my sweet spot here, minus the pat, minus the 20 dB, right? That's an important feature. So if I just, you know, if I turn down the input level on the preamp, 
crank up the gain. Oh, I'm like two feet from the microphone right now. I can almost hear my heart beating. It's incredible. You can hear my chair squeaking. But it's really nothing that you'd want to listen to, is it? <laughs> I mean, the detail of this microphone is, is staggering. It's it's beautiful. Um, and you can push it to the brink of, like, you know, an abomination of what a great studio quality microphone like this should do. Um, so anyways, you know, in, in, you know, when I look at this microphone and its, its pedigree and its history and even though this is not one of the vintage ones maybe that michael jackson used i don't know which he used um i think this one's made in mexico i think that's what it is um it's a phenomenal microphone and i have another one that i did a little bit of a review on earlier um a few episodes ago this is this one here it's an electro voice uh cardinal um great condenser mic um totally budget price and if you work with it you can get some great results um there is no magic pill for any of these things uh whenever you're working with any microphone uh you have to be aware of gain staging which is like the levels of volume boosting between the stages of you know the output of the microphone through to the input of your interface through to the input stage of your audio workstation whatever you're working with i work with reaper and i worked with this um back and forth quite a few times to try and get decent results without the tube preamp in line and i couldn't i honestly couldn't i would and i've tried different ways of uh, supplying power to all my gear all of my gear at this moment is running through an ART PS 4x4 Pro power filter bank station, whatever you want to call it. It's all filtered power. It's all clean. I've run extension cords from elsewhere in the house from separate circuits so that not even my computer monitor interface and the preamp are on the same circuit. All of them have the same effect. Um, so... I can I can quite confidently say that um, you you don't really need um, a really expensive preamp for this microphone, uh, but for me, what I would like to do is to be able to use this live, and I don't want to have to take a separate device like this um, out when I'm gigging. And if I were to be in such a situation where I, I feel that the SM7B would be appreciated um, sonically as an enhancement to a live performance, I, I would probably go fathead from what I've seen, although I haven't heard one on my own microphone, uh, simply because they attach right here. They don't interfere with anything. They're not like a an outboard piece of gear like this or a stomp box kind of unit looking thing like the cloud lifter it honestly i haven't heard either one of them in my own studio so i don't know i just know that as far as application goes i would lean towards the fat head um and it's like one third of the cost here in canada um anyway so i'm gonna i'm gonna draw this one at a at a, at a close now um I just wanted to have my little interjection into the world of Shure SM7B reviews out there on YouTube um, because I've, I've gone a little bit, bit of a different direction than most people do. I'm not comparing the cloud lifter to the fat head. I'm comparing the microphone uh, to a sub $100 preamp, the ART tube MPST. And you know what, for me, and the couple little trials I've done recording, um, when I'm working in this, what I would call the sweet spot of the microphone right now, I don't even need to introduce a noise gate. No matter how close I get to the microphone, I can try to pop it and I can bop it and I can make it do all kinds of bizarre and poopy things. I can't make the microphone pop at this level. Um, 
So I know that was a little bit creepy maybe, but I just wanted to show you that um, this, this one gain sweet spot with the, with the two pre seems to work pretty well. So maybe you've learned something. Uh, maybe you haven't. Um, maybe you think I should invest in, in better gear and do a more common review, but I don't care. Um, I'm using what I have uh, with a microphone that I've coveted for years, and now I have, and I'm making the best of it. With the, with the gear that I have right now without having to invest in anything further. So maybe you've learned something. Maybe you haven't. Maybe I've just confirmed some of your ideas about how you want to proceed with trying to invest in a microphone like this. Um, either way, I hope you've uh, you know enjoyed a little bit of um, audio nerdgasm in watching this and I will thank you for watching if you want to hit the like and subscribe button that's pretty cool uh, you can check out my other links on YouTube for my most recent album isolation dreams and if you want some new music that's a great way to go if you want to go back to whatever you were listening to that's great too so thanks for watching folks I appreciate your attention